Hello from Gardening at Duenza here in Ireland and you are very welcome to this orchid update. Now this one follows very closely on the back of the previous one where I introduced most of these beauties you see behind me today and I am not going to dwell on those again but I did want to show you the ones that have flowered since the last video. So let's have a look at them. And just before we start this video, I'm giving you a little pan over the orchids that I have assembled for you here today, but we're not going to focus on them all. In my recent video, I talked at length really about the Oncidiums. So in this video, I'm just going to concentrate on the Dendrobium, which is now in full flower, on the Brassada, which is that orangey one just over on the right, and the glorious little Trichopelia, which is this one right at the front, which is flowering for me for the very first time. This is Dendrobium sanderi, also known as Mrs. Sanders Dendrobium, whoever she was. I've had the plant for three years and it came to me as flowering size and it's flowered regularly ever since I've had it. It's one of the numerous beautiful orchids endemic to the Philippines. It's found in tropical pine forests in central Luzon in the Philippines and it's an epiphyte that grows on the trunks of pine trees at altitudes of about 1000 to 1600 meters. Now can you imagine something this big growing as an epiphyte? As we know, the Dendrobium genus is vast and so it's been broken down into groups for ease of cultivation. So this glorious Dendrobium belongs to the Formicae group or Nigrohirtsutai group. And the Formicae group is generally characterized by black hairs on leaf sheets and pseudobulbs, but I don't see any hairs on my particular plant. And in this group, flowers are usually white, up to four inches across, two or three together from near the end of the pseudobulbs. And they're also very long lasting. And this, although a general bloom description for the group, describes my sanderai blooms beautifully. They are four inches, but from the top to the bottom of the flowers rather than across. Now, whereas the Formicae group generally contains dendrobiums, which require intermediate to cool temperatures. Dendrobium sanderi needs intermediate to warm and medium amounts of light. It needs to be kept moist when in active growth. And that's why I have this top dressing of moss here. And it needs to be kept drier in winter. Now, generally I've watered mine every two weeks in winter, whenever the medium has dried out. And just finally, as a footnote to this dendrobium and Philippine orchids in general, you should know that there are about 24,000 orchid species worldwide. Now, this is an approximation as ones are found and discovered all the time. But out of this number, a whopping 944 species are endemic to the Philippines. Now, these are approximate numbers, of course, but isn't that just amazing? It means the Philippines has to be up there as one of the best places to go to see orchids. Next, we have Brasada Orange Delight. And this came to me as a seedling, a shocking seven years ago. It did come in pretty bad shape though. And even still, it's taken a long time to flower. Now, this hybrid is an interesting example of the use of Ada orantiaca. So this is the genus, the orchid genus called Ada. And Ada orantiaca and Brassia have gone to produce an orange flowering hybrid, which we see in front of us here. Just look at those really long spider-like petals. They're just gorgeous. Now Brassada orange delight bears many orange flowers with some dark spots on the sepals. However, I'm slightly disappointed in the lightness of the orange color. 
The colour started out almost yellow and it's darkening as the blooms mature so I hope that in time this colour will darken up nicely. This orchid is supposedly cool to intermediate going from the requirements of its parentage and I water it about once a week and keep it with my oncidiums. And now we have Trichopelia suavis, a real little beauty. And I bought this plant as a seedling four years ago. So this is its first flowering. And what I think is quite interesting is that although these small to medium sized orchids, they belong to the Oncidium Alliance, their flowers have quite an unusual structure. They resemble more classical looking orchids with their tubular lips. Orchids like Cattleya and Lelia. And Trichopelia's sepals and petals are often undulate and twisted. Lips are three lobed, forming an attractive looking tube. Trichopelia suavis is native to Costa Rica, Panama and Colombia and the slopes of the Kiriki volcano. <laughs> It grows on moss-covered trees at elevations of about 1,150 to 1,700 metres. It's warm to cool growing and it's epiphytic. And like many orchids, it slows down in winter when it needs less watering. I'm quite pleased with the first flowering of this little orchid, but I hope it'll go on to produce more flowers over time. And as you can see, Although opened only a few days, one of these flowers is already beginning to brown a little. So it's not a great result for a first flowering, but still I'm quite pleased with it all the same. Okay, so that was my video about Dendrobium sanderi, Brasada Orange Delight and Trichopelia suavis, all of which are looking absolutely gorgeous at the moment and really brighten up my collection, brighten up my display, brighten up my house and brighten up my life. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video and I will see you on the next video. Bye!